3D is all about working with objects, so let's learn how to select them. Luckily, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is left click to select an object. I'll left click on the camera, then left click on the cube, and I can go back and forth selecting each object. You'll notice that whichever object is selected is outlined in orange in the 3D view. As we select different objects, you'll also see that it's highlighted differently over here in the top right. This editor is called the Outliner, and it's a hierarchical view of the scene. We can also select things here. So we can select the cube with just a left click, and also we can select the light or the camera. As we select different objects, the editor below jumps around a little bit. That's because this editor is the properties editor, and different objects have different properties. Now, things get a little bit more interesting when we start selecting multiple objects. We can do that in the 3D view simply by holding down shift while selecting an object. So the camera is currently selected, but if I hold down shift and select the cube, then I can add it to the selection. The shift hotkey actually toggles the selection, not just adds to it. So I can also hold down shift, left click on the cube, and remove it from the selection. So go ahead and practice adding and removing different objects from the selection. Shift left click on the cube, shift left click on the light, and then let's shift left click on the cube again. But you'll notice that that didn't deselect it. The clue as to why can be found in two places. First, the color of the outline is a brighter orange, while the rest of the objects are a darker orange. Also in the outliner, you can see that the cube has a brighter highlight than the others. The reason it's highlighted differently is that the cube is currently the active object. Blender uses the idea of an active object for a couple different things, but the most important one for now is that it's the one that's being edited in the properties editor. So we can see we have the cube object here, but then if I were to hold down shift and then left click on the camera, it becomes the active object. It's highlighted a little bit brighter than the others, and we also see it appear in the properties editor. So shift clicking on objects actually does a couple things. First, if the object is selected but not the active object, a shift click will make it the active object. But if it's the active object already, then a shift click will deselect it. We can also select multiple objects in the outliner, and we can do that more like a file browser. So we can also hold down shift here, but that'll actually select the range in between two selections. So if I select the camera and then shift select the light, it'll select everything in between in that list. Also similar to a file browser, I can use the control key to select multiple things without selecting anything in between. I can also deselect everything by left clicking an empty space. That works in the outliner as well as in the 3D view. Just left click in an empty space and everything is deselected. To select everything all at the same time, we can go to select and then all. If we don't have any empty space in the 3D view to click to deselect everything, we can also go to select and then none. The hotkey for those two are A and Alt A, and those would be really good to get used to. A to select all, Alt A to deselect all. One thing that's important to notice is that even though nothing is selected right now, we still have the cube in the properties editor. The icon for it is also highlighted a little bit different over in the outliner. That's another indication that it's the active object. We can also see an orange dot in the center of it in the 3D view, which is its origin, something that we'll talk about much more in a later video. But for now, those are all signs that this is still the active object, even though it's not selected. In Blender, there always has to be one active object. So you can't have no active objects, and you can't have two or more active objects. There's always going to be exactly one. It's usually just the last selected one. There are a whole lot more select operations that you can do in the select menu. I don't have time to go over all of these now, but it's worth exploring them in case you're curious. Now, another way to select is to use the active tool. You might have noticed the toolbar over here in the top left of the 3D view, and here's where we can switch between our different active tools. By default, we're using the box select tool, and that just means that we can left click and drag anywhere in the 3D view in order to do a box select. Notice that a box select doesn't change the active object, but whatever's inside the box gets selected and anything that's outside the box gets deselected. If we want, we can change this behavior up in the tool properties. That's this little notch underneath the main header. If you don't see it, then you can just go to view and turn on tool settings. Toggling that, we'll turn it on and off. If we want to switch this to the second icon, then we can use the box select to only add to the selection without deselecting anything else. If we use the third icon, then we can use it to only remove from the selection. The fourth icon is going to invert the selection. And the last one is going to deselect everything not in the selection. We also have a couple other selection tools in the toolbar, but they're slightly hidden. Any of the tools that have this little triangle in the bottom right of it means that there are some sub tools that we can access. 
We get to those by left clicking and holding and then dragging our mouse and selecting any one of these others. So I'll drag over to the tweak tool and then lift my mouse. Now with the tweak tool, we can't do a box select, dragging an empty space won't do anything. But if I drag over an object, then I'll move it around. If I drag over the light, then I'll probably get the size gizmo. But then if I left click and drag over it again, then I can move it around. Let's left click and hold again. This time let's go to the circle select. And this one's more like a paint select. Lastly, we have a lasso select. Again, you can change the behavior for this in the tool properties, but I usually like to use the box select, so I'll leave it at that one and set it back to its default settings. And I think that's everything you need to know about selection for now. We talked about a lot, but the three main things that are most important to remember are that you can just left click to select objects, shift left click to toggle selection, remembering that there's both selected objects and the active object, and that you can select all and none by going to the select menu. If you can do those three things, then you're ready to move on to the next lesson where we're going to have some fun transforming objects.